Thank you. Good evening, and thanks to the organizers for inviting me to this great event. And before we go further, today is International Women's Day, so could I have a word of thanks to all the women who make our life better here? Yeah. Thank you. That's an easy way of getting some applause here. Yeah. Um, what I've, I, I'm a scientist. I, I never thought I would say that one day. Um, and all my life I've wanted to be one. And what I'm going to tell you today is a bit about how this came about. And I think this is, um, you know, it's a personal story. But at the same time, I think it will help, especially those of you who are about to make some very important choices like what university you're going to, what career you will follow in your life. I hope by the end of this you will be convinced that um, whatever choice you make, you're not going to die. Uh, you will be able to follow your path as long as you've got strong passion and as long as you've got strong will to follow a direction. I am a professor at uh, the University of Oxford. I study malaria parasites, but that's not how it's always been. Um, as a small kid, I... I wanted to be a scientist, I really did. And when I was 12, I, I learned about Darwin and how his theories were much better than Lamarck's. And, uh, um, and the thought that all life came from a single source, that it had changed gradually, that he has spread around the world, that our humans were were animals, uh, our early humans were animals and uh, you know we are all related. This was a marvelous concept in my head, and I really wanted to be somebody who, made, who studied this. Um, however, there was, there was a problem with that. When I started studying biology, it all seemed like word soup to me. You know, it was, um, it was very, very long, difficult words in, uh, in, in Greek and in Latin, and uh, uh, a lot of sort of parts of the body and parts of a tree and parts of this and that and cycles. It didn't seem to have any logic to it whatsoever. And that wasn't who I was. You know, I, I liked, I liked to be able to work from first principles and build things up. So biology really wasn't the thing for me. So I, I was more, I was more of a physicist. So, um, I did study physics, I, I studied at school, and I went on to do a degree in physics, as it turns out, and, um, and I, I have to say, I really loved it. Um, I was good at maths, that's one thing you have to do if you want to be a physicist. Um, but especially, I was very interested in semiconductors and electronics, and I know I'm talking about a very long time ago here, uh, so in the middle, in the mid 1980s, um, electronics and computers were, were a very big deal. Now, you know, we have them in our pockets. So, um, but when I, when I graduated, I went to work for, um, for a research center, um, designing electronic circuits first and then, uh, learned how to program computers. And, and that was really, really exciting at the time. It was, uh, well, it was easy to get a job in it as well, which was uh, a bonus point. But I, I could also use my physics because, um, you know, one of my first jobs was analyzing speech so that I could program computers to reproduce it and teach computers how to speak. Now, again, we take it for granted we got it in our pocket, but in those days it was a big new thing. And, I, I you know, I also developed one of the first... Um, graphical user interface systems. So it was a very exciting time. And I worked, I worked in that field for a while, but then change happened. You know, change, and yeah, we come into it. Uh, change happened. Um, computing in many ways became commoditized, if you, if you can understand the word. Um, and, you know, I, my, my, the company I was working for was not doing so well and all this. And suddenly something happened and I got, I got a chance. Um, I don't like to work, to, to sit in the aisle on the plane. Well, in this case, you are probably good company, but, um, it, it, it was, but, you know, one time 
I was going to a conference in the, in the US and, um, I only had a Nile seat left and I sat next to this chap who happened to be a professor at the National University of Singapore. And we started talking to each other and uh, he, he told me he was in software engineering and I said I was in software engineering too. And, I, and by the time we got to Boston, basically I had a job offer to go and, and teach in Singapore. Now, what do you do with that? You know, you, you've, you're sort of, you're, you're, you're in living in England, you, you have a job, in, in Italy in this case I was, and then suddenly now you're offered to go the other side of the world. So when this, when this type of choices come about, I, I kind of, I have this mental image of, you know, these lumberjacks that sort of took tree trunks down the river and sort of stood on them and then they had to jump from tree trunk, from one tree trunk to the other to direct them. And, all. and every time you jump, you kind of have to be sure that you're not going to go under, right? You have to make sure it's, it's not too far. You have to make sure it's going to take your weight. You have to make sure that it's not going to roll you over and things like that. And I, I, I felt at the time that, you know, I was, I was about to jump on a, on a trunk and I decided to take the opportunity and go. By the way, within a year, the company I was working for was no more. And so another, another thing, when you jump from one tree trunk to the other, never look back. Okay, just now you're in a new trunk, you're going. Now, I, I worked in Singapore as a lecturer, and I must have trained over a thousand software engineers and master's courses and so on. And it, it, was, a, it was a great time. It was, um, uh, you know, it, it, I was very happy. I learned many new things. I, I did many new things. And yet at some point I sort of, uh, I sort of needed some change again. And what happened is in 2003, and of course most of you are too young to, to know it, but in 2003 there was a very big hoo-ha and the first draft of the human genome was published. And it was like every day was on the radio, on the newspapers and all this. And I found myself not knowing anything about this stuff. A bit embarrassing, really. Um, so I started reading up about it. And I suddenly realized that that biology that was full of fancy words and a lot of disconnected things, in fact, at the very foundation, was very basic. If you understood DNA, you could understand the complexity of life. Not only, but DNA ultimately was kind of a computational problem. And that's what I was good at. So suddenly, the little child in me who wanted to study Darwin actually had a chance. Now, the thing is, it's all very well to say, okay, there's been a change, and you want an opportunity, but where, where does that chance come from? And sometimes it's very unexpected. I went to a barbecue. And when I, I went to a barbecue and I met a chap, now none, none of the people pictured here were part of that event. Um, I, I, I met a chap and, um, and I asked, you know, as one does, what do you do in life? And he said, oh, I'm a bioinformatician. Oh, does them, yeah, I, you know, I study DNA and we write programs and things. It's fantastic, this is what I want to do. And he says, yeah, come and see me on Monday morning. I mean, almost literally like that. Um, so I went to see him and he said, okay, if you want to do this stuff, you have some very good skills. By that time I was 40 years old, by the way. Um, I should point that out. Um, why don't you join us? But you got to do it seriously. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Don't go to a school of computing. They don't know anything about biology. Go to the a school of medicine, mix with the doctors, go with the biochemists, make, do stuff that makes the difference. So actually, I did a PhD, I, uh, I studied influenza viruses and how they evolve and I was in there. I was doing evolution of pathogens for stuff that mattered in, uh, it, it, to, to, to humanity because of course influenza is one of the very major diseases that plague the the human race. 
After that, after I completed my PhD, again, a wonderful chance came about. University of Oxford was looking for somebody to work pretty much on the similar type of work, but on a different disease, on malaria, a disease that kills hundreds of thousands of children in Africa alone every year. And, and I, that was a beautiful coincidence, because not only was I going to do the science I wanted to do, but I was also going to do something useful, which, by the way, I, I don't know how everyone feels, but I think that's a pretty important thing in life to feel that you're doing something that's, that's making a difference. So right now, 10 years later, um, I'm uh, leading large projects in Southeast Asia where we take blood drops from people who have malaria, we extract the DNA of the parasites, we compare them, and we study, we identify the things that make them resistant to the drugs that we're using so that we can use better drugs and treat more people and eventually eradicate the disease. So this is where I am today. And um, I hope I have conveyed that uh, it's not being a straight path by any means. But I wanted to summarize um, uh, the, my main points. So points to remember. The first one is that everything changes all the time. Your circumstances will change. Uh, your, what you like will change. You will change. Um, the place where you live will change. The, the weather will change. Everything will change. So embrace that. It's not something that, uh, that you, you fight against. Change means opportunity. Second thing, the opportunities translate into chances that we'll get, you'll get occasionally. Now, I've told you only about the chances that I did take. I didn't take you all the ones I, I passed by. You have, to be, you have to judge whether a chance is worth taking, and there will be probably more chances you'll give a miss than the ones you'll take. And how do you evaluate that? Well, you know, that's a million-dollar question, of course. But certainly, I've always found the best thing to go by was I know it's a commonplace thing to say, but it was with my heart, right? So follow your passion. Follow what you think is right. Follow what you think will make a difference. So my third and last piece of advice is have a passion. Follow it. It may change. It may not be the same today as in 10 years' time. It doesn't matter. Keep on chasing it and, you know, shape your life that way. Thank you very much.